Hi, Steve Lockhart here from learnmassage.com.au. Now the following video is part of my full SLM bodywork professional training program and it's aimed at helping body workers and massage therapists get better results in their clinic when they're treating pain and injuries. Now I've got lots of these videos going up on my channel so please subscribe by clicking on the link in the bottom left hand corner and you'll get notified when any new videos get posted. I hope you enjoy the content and get something out of it. Thanks a lot. Okay, so as far as prep work goes, that's pretty well all you need to do for the upper body. Now, I don't know if you can notice, but that looks quite relaxed, that area now. A lot calmer than the other side. So, that's the benefit of it. And then, you know, when you're massaging, you should feel a lot less knotty and like less problems because you've already cleared a lot of it out. Now, the, the next move is to just work the hips. Ten minutes. Um, a lot of the the stuff which, like I've mentioned, some of it to do with oil. So you do the erectors before the oil, and really the rest of it is probably with oil. This one I would tend to do a little bit of this before the oil. Uh, you know, you're working with your sacrum, so you've got that triangular bone there. Okay, so with that sacrum, you want to come to the edge of it, so the soft tissue where it meets that sacrum bone, and it's just general compressions, there's no, you know, it's right through the whole soft tissue, there's no, um, no particular target. The best way to work on the hips is definitely with the, the bonger tools. So this is just a bit of prep work because, you know, normally you do fingertip work through there and um, if you're strong through the fingertips that's all fine, but if you're not, or you, you know, you can have trouble sometimes reaching when you're not so tall or your table's a bit high, reaching forward. So this is a nice way to start that and again you can go in and push it across you can sort of like mulch the muscle a little bit more than just compressions and then of course you know during the massage you just anchor and just lever it through it okay right up through the the muscle itself you can lever it up that way just with straight out pressure just to get good Good work to massage through there, but I'd certainly say that working on um, the elbow, like using the pressure points, is really key with the with the hips. So finding this that little pocket to pop the point of the elbow in from the glute minimus muscle, and what I tend to do if you want a fast fix, like without getting into too much work with the pressure points is start with this one so you're feeling there's a bit of a muscle there and you're, you're sitting into that little groove okay so you're sitting in that little groove so there's a, a bulk of a muscle there and there's a little groove that you can slot your elbow down into and your pressure is coming down on the body a little bit and then from that point you can actually if with the oil is Draw, draw the point of the elbow right across right across the edge of where the muscle attaches in on the pelvis there right and then our sacrum point which is basically at where that, that muscle comes around or the, the bone comes around here and right at the where it drops off because you can feel it and it drops off you can bring your elbow right around to that point, okay? So you can just follow that whole line. And that's just a really good release for the whole hip. But combined with this, those two movements, so the sweeping forward and sweeping towards the middle, and then finishing up, like still doing some fingertip work if you possibly can during the massage, and then finishing up stretching the hip and doing the massage bongers. And, you know, to varying degrees, like if you find that's a real bad area, you might have to spend a lot of time on that, but you might find that after just, you know, a couple of sessions, a couple of treatments, that that area really feels much better and the hips look quite balanced. So it just depends on what condition it's in. The uh, hamstrings, 
which would be better for that. Probably uh, the bigger stick. The hamstring, you can do the same thing, just the compressions, straight down, so not, not actually um, anything fancy, just straight compressions down there. And then, same with during the massage, you can, you can actually drag down, like for a flat pressure if you want to get some extra power, dragging down through the hamstring. And what you'll find normally if you drag down through the hamstring is it'll tense the butt up and lift up through that side, which is a sort of explain on the videos, it's more about stimulating and releasing all up through here. So, you know, you can do it using your thumb, which is a bit more direct, but this is a, a like probably easier for them and it's a more broad stroke. So just working down that line, okay? And combined with just the easier like warm-up massage that you've done, which isn't too hard, and then bring that into play once you've warmed the area up and do that. And then you can even do the calves, okay? You don't have to use much pressure. As you're probably aware, the calves can be quite sensitive. And you just got to keep changing the line of pressure and being thorough. But most calf problems are not coming from the calf, so as long as you don't feel any real obvious knots in there, it'll be all right. If you do feel an obvious knot in there, then working through it a few times and leaving it, you should find the next time they come in it's not, not there anymore or it's greatly reduced. But I think you can experiment. I mean, it's, it's really a case of just trying to be thorough. You know, it's... Yeah. No, I think I think when you're working with this, it's a matter of, you know, how can I get to that area a bit better and, you know, it's really experimenting a little bit and, and changing your which hand which broom handle you want and 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 bringing in the elbow. If you think an area is a little bit difficult to get to, there's no problem with bringing the elbow, doing a little bit of elbow, but at the end of the day, if you use the broom handle and the elbow for most of your treatment, you'll you'll get the the strength or the power that you need without exerting yourself too much. And the same with the feet. Now the feet, you know, we talk about the um, using the knuckles on the feet, but that can be hard in itself because you're holding the feet, the foot up, and you're working on the knuckles and getting that power. So again, you know, just working through through the base of the feet from the heel to the top of the or to the base of the toes with the broom handle, it's a very simple sweeping action. Sometimes if a person's you know, extra tall and they're hanging over the end of the table, you haven't got good leverage with that. So what I tend to do is at some point I would get them to slide forward and even use the bolster so that their foot comes up and, and uh, they're actually slide forward to bring their foot up so you've got good power and good leverage on it. And then just spend five minutes or a few minutes on the feet, you know, alternating from one to the other, and then finish it there. But you know, if someone has or complains of feet problems, it's always a good idea to teach them the strapping technique with the hot water and the strapping because they can do that every day at home and that's really effective. So, you know, it's, it's a good thing. It's a hard job in terms of the therapist's concern. There's a lot of, you know, you could spend an hour like the reflexologists do on the feet, but you're not going to get a lot done up here. But if you have them loosen their feet up and improve that during the week, then you'll find that the rest of the body will respond better for that. So it's a good thing to have them doing to help themselves as part of that self-treatment concept. And with the legs, um, the legs can be quite difficult and for a lot of people because of the hand span required to, to actually work through the quads and somebody that you know does weights or running or or actually bike, you know, that has a lot of bulk in their quad, that can be quite difficult for you to get the power in there to be effective. And the broom handle works, you know, wonderfully well. Um, with this anterior tibialis, you know, you can do a flat hand thing here, but if again, if you want more leverage, more power, it's very easy to do your little, get your little broom handle, even putting your hand on it and doing it that way, you know, just to get pressure, depending on what sort of pressure you want. But you can get them into a different position too. So if you want them, if that's a bit awkward for you, you know, you can turn the leg in and get some decent pressure down if you need it. Or even working up and down, you'll get a, you tend to get a different reaction both ways. Both are good. 
uh, even when they're lying on their side, you know, like if you want to do the ITB, when they're lying on their back, you can, you can flick the leg back that way, you know, towards their centre, so they put their foot up and bring the leg back that way and really expose the side of their leg, and that's a really great way of, you know, getting more easy access to work down with the broom handle. And I'm going to show you a really good release technique on that tomorrow. And then with the quad, remember we've got the, the center rectus femoris muscle, and then you've got your vastus lateralis, which comes right through to the hamstring. So that's a big muscle that works right through the side. It's held in by that iliotibial band. And you've got this rectus femoris muscle on top, and then you've got your adductors, okay? So working down through the rectus femoris is a good way. You can easily get plenty of pressure using this ample pressure and as I say if you want to and you want to switch them to their side a little bit you know it gives you very easy access here too for leverage so there's no effort and you really don't have to use a lot of effort on the legs you're fine because the legs are usually quite sensitive but you do want to have like all the knots and lumps out of there and the only real thing that you can face with the quadriceps is they can be so hard like people that do a lot of running, they tend to be very hard in the legs. And what I'd suggest you do is use the wall sit, you know, as part of the SLM yoga for that, because with the wall sit, that stationary position does help break up that congestion and force the blood through and help soften it up. So even if you, even if they don't do the whole SLM yoga, if they just do the wall sit, then and they don't have to go down too low. It's just putting the pressure into these muscles and leaving it there, and that will help you, you know, get some depth in there when you're trying to break it down because if somebody runs a lot and they get really hard in the quads it's also very sensitive and you know it can take a while to get it to soften up um, okay so you do the quad and then with the adductor I tend to think that the easiest way the adductor is is the forearm because you've got the soft tissue okay with the broom handle you know you you know if you're talking about a, a big burly bloke and He's got some real hard sections in there. You might want to do some holding, like some compression on there, but dragging would be quite torturous, so you might not move too much like that, but certainly get some pressure there. You know, hold that pressure, even slip, um, actually lift it and place it, okay, just to get some really good release stuff. And then for, a, for an effective massage that doesn't involve a lot of hand strength, just change your change your position but just using your forearm and use the soft muscle in your forearm. Okay then at the end Well I hope you got some good information from that video and there's a lot more coming so please don't forget to subscribe by clicking on the link in the bottom left hand corner of this video and in the meantime check out my website learnmassage.com.au and pick up a free copy of the book How to Fix Pain Using Massage and Bodywork and I'll speak to you again soon.